from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE, covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back to our live coverage here in Seattle for KubeCon and CloudNativeCon 2018. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, here for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. 8,000 people up from 4,000 last year growing Kubernetes and the cloud native ecosystem around, around KubeCon. Next two guests, John Morello, CTO of Twistlock, hot startup, some news, and Nanda Kumar, who's a fellow systems engineer at Verizon's Global Technology Service. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thanks for having on us. your news, and Kelsey wearing your shirt on the <laughs> Cube earlier. Thanks for having us. So take a minute to explain what you guys do, your story, you guys got a lot of hot things happening. Take a minute to talk about the company's value. Yeah, sure, so we've been around for about four years now, or going on four years. Uh, we were kind of the first company in this space that, that's really focused on cloud native cybersecurity. So the, the idea is not just to take the existing capabilities that you've had on traditional systems and kind of retrofit them onto to, to this new platform, but really to leverage the way that the cloud native space works to be able to do security in a different and hopefully a more effective way. You know, cloud native has this notion of, of immutability and be able to take an artifact, the same artifact from development to staging to production, and that enables us to do things in a security fashion that you really haven't been able to do in the past, like actually be able to enforce security controls at the very beginning of the life cycle of the app, to be able to ensure consistency in your compliance posture all the way through production, and then as we learn things at runtime, to be able to signal that knowledge back to developers so they can actually improve the security of the application at the beginning. So um, we basically have a platform that gives you those, those capabilities, vulnerability management, compliance, runtime defense, and firewalling across VMs, Containers and serverless across any cloud you have. We're not specific to any one cloud provider. So it's like technology. telemetry coming back to the developer in real time. Yeah, I mean, basically, as you know, as an example, when when you have an application that's deployed in the old world, you would you as a developer would give the app to an operator, they would deploy it, and then maybe you know weeks later somebody would scan it and they'd say you've got these vulnerabilities, and they'd have to go back and tell somebody to go and fix them. There's a lot of time where you're exposed, there's a lot of cost to that operation. Yeah. The way that we're able to do that for the vulnerability case is, as a developer builds the application, every build they do, Twistlock can scan that and see the vulnerabilities and actually enforce that as a quality gate and say if you've got critical vulnerabilities, you have to fix them before you progress. And then as you take that application and move that into tests and staging and production, we create this dynamic runtime model that describes basically an implicit allow list of what's normal behaviors. So you don't have to tell us that my application, you know, my web server normally runs Nginx and listens on port 80. We learn that automatically. We create this reference model where you can understand what's normal and then we automatically prevent anomalies. So unlike that traditional world of security where you had to have a whole bunch of manual rules that try to, you know, to blacklist everything that was bad, <laughs> yeah. we just say like, we learn what's good and only allow that. It's uh, predictive and prescriptive in one. Yeah, exactly. So um, what's the role here with Kubernetes? How do you fit into this, the Kubernetes standardization momentum? Yeah, so I mean for us, we, you know, we've kind of predated the rise of Kubernetes in some ways um, and have really supported Kubernetes from the very beginning, like you know, when it really became a project, became popular. Um, you know, our, our platform is designed to work as a native cloud native app itself. So when you deploy Twistlock, you run the Twistlock uh, console, our management service, an API controller. All that's run just as a, a cloud native app. You know, you deploy as a replication controller. When you deploy Twistlock Defender, our, our, our agent effectively, our containerized agent to all the nodes where you're running compute jobs, you run that as a daemon set. So for us, not only do we protect the platform, but we just are part of the platform. There's nothing abnormal that you have to do. You deploy it and manage it like you would any other Kubernetes application. All right, Nanda, let, let, let's pull you into the, sure. the, the conversation here. Uh, you know, Verizon, obviously, most pe people know. Uh, explain what your group does, how cloud native fits into what, what, what you're doing. Sure, I'm, I'm uh, part of the, uh, the Global Technology Services Organization. So, so Verizon, as you probably know, is, is, is a, a mixed bag of different types of businesses uh, brought together, wireless being the most prominent one that most of you know about it, uh, but we also have other solutions, like our fire solutions, and um, uh, recently with our acquisition of uh, Yahoo, which is Hoth, um, and so forth. Um, so Verizon is actually on a major uh, transformation journey. Uh, our uh, transformation journey spans around a five-year program. Uh, we are into year number three of this transformation, and um, you know, cloud native and cloud native technology is a very foundational um, aspect for us as part of this transformation. Um, I was just chatting uh, with John earlier um, that it's, it's, it's opportunity like this doesn't come that often uh, because we are in a perfect um, intersection of where organizations like Verizon is doing a, a cloud migration 
and then you have these cloud native technologies that have been made available, whether it's Kubernetes, um, container, and so forth. So that mesh of the opportunity to migrate, and as you migrate, you're taking advantage of these technologies and, and modernizing your application stack is a big win. Okay, and can you connect for us the intersection of what you were just talking about in 5G, which is you know, really going to be a, a huge impact on everything happening in telecommunications? Yeah, the whole idea about 5G for us is not just, you know, it's a next generation of technology, it's all about human, human availability of it, which basically means we want to make sure that technology is used to solve real human problems, and, and, the, te and the technology is capable of doing that. Right, uh, be it um, whether it is in life science or, or be it in transportation and so forth, we really want to make sure the technology is being used to solve real human problems. And to enable the consumption of this technology, we want to take advantage of cloud native services to support it. Yeah, help boil it down for us because you know, you just in general, you say even domestically, I think it's like 40% of the you know, US population doesn't have access to broadband. Right. Uh, and you know, wireless, you know, those of us at the conference here understand that wireless isn't always reliable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 5G, silver bullet, everybody's going to have yep. infinite bandwidth everywhere, right? Absolutely, and that's the, <laughs> the value proposition of the technology yeah. that it brings to the table. I know the, um, the spread of the technology is going to vary depending upon you know, the commercialization of the, pro of the solution and so forth. But the, the reality is, in the new world that we live in, it is not just one piece of technology that's going to make it, it's going to be a mesh of you know, new technologies like 5G with the combination of Wi-Fi and so forth, all of this coming together. It all comes down to fundamentally what are the use cases or what type of solutions you're going to go after and how it's going to make sense. Uh, how is cloud native and this transformation change how you guys make investments. Obviously the security equations, paramount, mm -hmm. central, central that, get the, a lot of data. Right. How is the investments and how you guys are building out change, obviously looking at reimagining mm -hmm. operations, yep. uh, security, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, how's that going to shape for you guys? In the One of the things that Nan and I were talking about earlier is that, that not, not because of cloud native, but it's enabled by cloud native. I, I think you look at almost all organizations today and to, you know, to, to, to reuse that, that phrase, that Andreessen quote about software eating the world, it really right. is a true thing. I mean, like, unlike in the past where IT had been this cost center that, that most organizations sought to strangle out and reduce as much as possible, I think most, most, at least modern, and I think the companies that will be successful in the future, realize that, that that's part of their competitive mm -hmm. advantage. You know, it's not just about providing an app because your competitor has an app, it's about providing a better experience so that you're driving more revenue having a better relationship, a longer term, deeper relationship with that customer. You know, like we were talking about, it's right. not just like for, in his case, like, you know, if they build kind of a, a minimal application or minimal experience for, for their customers, you know, their customers may choose to go to AT&T or, or whomever else if they right. can feel like, hey, I can, you know, it's easier for me to work with them, I get better data, I can use my systems more easily. And if you have that inflection point where people are having to really invest in building better software, better industry specific software, you need those tools of mass innovation to do that, and that's what cloud native really is. It's about being able to take and, and innovate and iterate on those innovations much more rapidly than you've been able to do in the past. And so it's, it's really this confluence of those two yeah. trends that make this space as big as it is. I mean, that's why well, we have so many Well, you go faster too, the investment right. in, in apps, in yeah. your applications, yeah, faster. I mean, I mean, you talk about so your security solution exactly. replaces the old way of, hey, is there a problem? <laughs> go patch it. Well, it also yeah. has to get away from right. like, that approach where people took in the past, where security was always this friction, it was this impediment. Mm -hmm. You know, you wanted to yeah. deploy something and you had to go through the security review and create all these rules and it was a, it was a hassle and it slowed things down. If, you're, if that's your approach to security, you're, you're going to be a, at a fundamental yeah. like right. conflict to this. I think this you'll be approach. out of business personally. I think that's that, that paradigm, that ship has sailed, that's dead. That's going to, yeah. you know, we, we see the breaches every day. You right. Just, you see in all the dark webs have been harvesting all that. IOT though is a different kind of animal. Mm -hmm. How will you guys look at the IOT equation because that's a good use case for cloud. You can push now compute to the edge. Mm -hmm. You don't have to move data around. Certainly you guys are in the, the right. telecom business. You know what that means, so mm -hmm. latency matters. Yep. How are you looking at the edge, IOT, and where does security fit into that? So in terms of IOT, I think, as you said, mentioned, like, there are going to be use cases where uh, IOT is going to be very critical, right? I mean, there are two um, paradigms for the, the concept of the mobile edge compute, right? One is for the IOT use cases. The other could be even for, like, AR, VR is a good example, right? You want that, uh, the compute to be so fast where you want responses immediately based on the location you are and so forth. Um, so that's a very important foundation that we are working on and, and making that a reality for organizations to come use it. 
And of course, any solution that we provide, um, security needs to be baked into it, uh, because yeah. that's going to be foundational for how well, successful back it is. Back to your 5G point, that's great backhaul too for those devices mm -hmm. that want to at least, if they want to send data that's back right. or right. You know, inter interface with the edge, yeah. you need and power and compute, need power and connectivity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Very true. Yeah, so, you know, what's next, I guess? If you, you, you look forward, well, you know, where's this journey going? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how does this partnership, uh, you, yeah. you know, help, so, help solve things? I mean, for us, I, I think the key to any uh, successful transformation is you got to take into consideration your current landscape. Yeah. I mean, you certainly can have a, a broad vision of where the future is and so forth, but if you can't build a bridge between where we are to where we need yeah. to go, um, that's going to be a very challenging space. So, when we look at the cloud native technologies, we look at it, it, making it operational efficiency for us, right? Yeah. In terms of how do we do our operations, like the earlier question that you talked about, what is changing for us? Our operations getting better. Uh, our security uh, posture is getting better because we're now shifting more of this to left, which means as the workloads are being built and so forth, we are taking into consideration you know, how it's going to run, where it's going to run and so forth, right? So that's going to create the savings and operational efficiency which then allows us to take that and transform it into, you know, how do we focus on more modern technologies and modern solutions yeah. and so forth. The customer satisfaction. And customer yeah, satisfaction. Building top line business revenue model. Right. So I got to ask, how is it going with Twistlock? What are they, where's their role in your transformation? Is on the security side? Mm -hmm. what, where do they play in, into your mix? So I, the, when we rolled out our solution for our Kubernetes platform, we certainly want to make sure that, uh, to John's earlier point, where we can shift left and really look at security holistically. And the only way you could do that is you need to capture um, the essence or integrate security as the product is being built. Yeah. Because today we do have a security posture but it's kind of where you have it during the development phase or during operations yeah. or during runtime. You're not able, never able to stitch it together. Yeah. But with, with container and Kubernetes, you now have the advantage of yeah. really knowing what is end to end. And that is where our partnership with Twistlock is to be able to oversee that and yeah. provide us insights on, hey, what is running, where it's running, what vulnerabilities exist, and how do we fix kinda it? It kind of makes sense, too. I mean, we, I mean, we talked for years, the perimeter's dead. Mm -hmm. You guys are addressing security up front right. at the application lay, lab level, yeah. where it's coding. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Is this is working out for you guys well? Yep, and then that's been a big shift, uh, in fact, for why we've been successful with this transformation, uh, because we now have insights to it, and everybody in the organization has line of sight yeah. of what's going on, where things are running, and so forth. So it's been John, a great talk about this dynamic, because this is really kind of compelling, because you know, we've heard, oh yeah, we got, we got all the, throwing everything against the wall in security. Yeah. And everyone always says, hey, the perimeter's dead, and you got to start from the you know, security in mind from day one. Yeah. Oh, I mean, what is day one? <laughs> the minute you start well, coding, I, right? right. I, mean, I, 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 I get your, your overall point about the perimeter uh, being dead. Mm -hmm. I would actually rephrase oh, it a bit and yeah. say the perimeter being dissolved. And yeah. then I think that's yeah. a really a more, a probably accurate way to look at it in that, yeah. You know, in a lot of customers, you've got this, you know, what used to be this very tightly defined, like we deploy things in this, you know, network, or even VPC, and it's got this control around it. Whereas a lot of customers today, we see choosing an intentional multi-cloud strategy. Like they want to preserve the ability to have some leverage, not just with Amazon, but with Azure, with Google, or whomever it may be, or on-premises. And when you have that model where you've got infrastructure in multiple regions, multiple different providers, you no longer have that, that very clean separation between what's yours and what's kind of out on the outside. And so one of the things that we really think is important is to be able to bring the perimeter to the application. So the way that we look at protecting the application is yeah. around the app itself, regardless yeah. of what the underlying compute platform mm -hmm. is, the yeah. cloud, the region, it's really about protecting the app. You know, you learn how those different microservices normally yeah. communicate with each other. You only allow that yeah. normal good communication, and thus you can really constrain the blast radius if you do have some kind of compromise in the future. Yeah. And the way that you really try to mitigate that compromise yeah. is to again find those vulnerabilities yeah. as you develop the app and prevent them in development before they ever get out to production. Yeah, and that's a super smart approach. I love that. I think it's a winner. Uh, congratulations. Final question: What's their prediction for multi-cloud in 2019? Since you brought it up, multi-cloud seems to be the hot hot thing. What's your prediction, 2019? It becomes a conversation, it becomes practice. I, I would say at this point, it, it already is practice in most organizations, and I would say that in 2019, you'll mm -hmm. see that become something that's accepted, not just as an option, but as really the, the preferred, the better operational model, so that you, you're able to choose technology platforms and operational approaches that are designed to work in a model in which you have multiple providers because you have a dependency layer that you can take now with Kubernetes and containers that's universal across those. You know, theoretically you could have always taken a VM, you put in Azure and moved it to AWS, but it was really difficult and painful and hard to do that. 
If you do that well with Kubernetes, it's really pretty straightforward to deploy an application across multiple providers or multiple regions of the same provider even. And I think you'll see that become a more real thing in 2019 yeah. because it gives you as a company or you as a customer more leverage to be able yeah. to choose the services and, and negotiate the rates that you want with your and providers. And if you move security to the app level like you guys are doing, you take away all that extra work around how to right. send yeah, policy and, it, exactly. and make it dynamic. And it doesn't matter yeah. whether or not you've got, I mean, our customers may have one twist lock environment that manages things in Azure and AWS and GCP and on-premises and that's fine because we care about protecting the app, not the right. underlying infrastructure. You agree? No, absolutely, I think that's going to be the case. Um, even from our perspective, we're going to always going to be look for you know, where is the best place to run these workloads and in a cost effective way and a secure manner. Yeah. And as long as you have a single control plane that you can manage it, yeah. I think the multi-cloud is going to be a reality. Make it easier to operate, same standard language for developers, right. lock-in security at the front end. That's right. Great yeah. stuff. Guys, thanks for coming on. Appreciate sure. the insight. Smart commentary here on security, cloud native, Kubernetes, all breaking it down here on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. Stay with us more. Day one coverage of three days of live coverage here in Seattle for KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. We'll be right back.